Hey guys, Brian Beeler here with another video from the Storage Review Lab. This time we've got something a little bit different. Yes, it's a enterprise NVMe SSD, but it's from a company called Dapu Store. Now they've been around not that long. They just started in 2016. They're out of Shenzhen, and this is a, uh, a relatively new line from them called the uh, Haishin 3. Now I'm probably murdering that, uh, that pronunciation, but uh, that's okay. We're mostly worried more about the performance than anything else. Um, so this is based on TLC NAND 96 layer, uses a Marvell controller inside, and it delivers really nice performance profile in most of the use cases. We'll dive in more deeply uh, to that as we go. Uh, but a couple things to point out um, out of the gate. When we take a look at the models that they offer, They've got a 3100 and 3200 family. This is the 3200 that we have in the 3.84 terabyte class. So it goes up to eight terabytes, which is great uh, for you know, meeting most uh, needs and 6.4 terabytes on the, uh, on the 3100. Now the 3100 is a higher drive write per day, a little bit more mixed workload. So it's got more over provisioning. That's why you see the, the lower capacity. The 3200 is a one drive write per day. Uh, which, uh, which gets you those higher capacities. In terms of performance, they've got a number of stats here across the board for all of the, uh, the capacities, but let's see, we're looking at 35, uh, <laughs> you get one more uh, megabytes per second on the, on the 7.68, so we should see about 3,500 megabytes per second uh, read on our model and, and 2,570 write uh, for, the, uh, for the large block. The other interesting thing here that, uh, that they're really excited about with these drives are lower uh, power consumption. Now we've toyed with different ways to measure power consumption in the past, but it is an important point with NVMe drives uh, that uh, if you look at the total amount of electricity a server uses, it's full of 20 or however many of these you, you jam in there, that if you can lower that power consumption while still keeping a nice uh, IOPS performance profile, that net benefits pretty strong. So what we've done is we've already concluded our, our performance testing on this drive. I'll bring Kevin in, we'll go over some of the highlights of the, uh, the drive and, and talk through it in a little bit more detail. All right, so after testing the Dapu Store H3200 across our platforms and, and test profiles, uh, brought Kevin in here to, to talk about performance and we're, the first thing we're looking at is the SQL Server output, and you make me kind of look like a liar when I said the the drive did you know, so, is pretty good performer. So t what's going on here? So this is where um, new procs that we have come in the lab. They're they're always uh, I, I'm I'm not sure if we've had one that didn't have an outlier uh, of a certain test result, and this is an area where. It performed very well across all of our other benchmarks. SQL Server, though, was an area where it really lacked. And um, certain drives, depending on how they're uh, focused on latency, this tends to be a test that uh, will kind of shake out different uh, devices. Well, we've seen this before, and so you know this latency looks bad uh, for, for SQL Server. And maybe it's something that they can resolve with firmware later, but we've seen a lot of drives do even worse on this test, including not being able to complete it. Yeah, it's a uh, interesting workload that has um, background random activity plus uh, log write sequential activity. And certain products can handle a mixture of one or the other, but um, latency t uh, in certain products can kind of shaken up um, when those log writes happen. And we'll see this with uh, high latency spikes. Yeah, so this is, to be clear, this is a, a real SQL Server environment. In some of the synthetic tests that sort of approximate an 8K SQL thing, it did pretty well, but in the real deal, it struggled. Well, yeah, the uh, synthetic workloads that we have focus on 8K where they don't really introduce the, uh, the log write activity. This is an area where um, application workloads act a little bit different out in the real world. And so here's another example of real-world work with Sysbench where the drive did pretty well. Yeah. Um, we haven't... Uh, it's been a while since we've had a uh, Huawei drive in the uh, the lab, but that was a very strong performer. The Memblaze, that one uh, performed really well, and you have to remember that's an edge card. It's not a uh, U.2 uh, form factor product. 
uh, and, again, and then again against the uh, P4610 and the uh, Toshiba PX04P. Uh, it, I mean, it, it did really well. Yeah, that's a good look. Let's roll into some of the uh, synthetic workloads you picked out for this. Yeah, and random read, uh, it's nearly touching uh, 800,000 IOPS, uh, which, it. I mean, this is an area where it was neck and neck for uh, a class-leading device in this test. Yeah, without blowing up its latency either, right? Yeah. And then sequential read, again, uh, this one came out to uh, probably around 3.3 gig a second, and um, the only drive that it did not surpass was that uh, edge card uh, memblaze. So fastest then in a U.2 form factor. Yeah. And bested only by memblaze, uh, another uh, uh, Chinese outfit. Um, so that's another strong look. And then we, you picked out one of these uh, Oracle charts. Yeah, so an Oracle and the uh, SQL synthetic workloads, it did really well. Uh, it had the uh, lowest latency and the highest performance. And it's not just, um, as we've seen with the other drives, they'll tend to clump together uh, towards the top. And this one ratcheted down almost uh, 20 microseconds across the board. Yeah, and that's a, you know, it doesn't sound like a lot of time, but that's a dramatic difference in terms of latency. Yeah, usually you'll only start to see this, uh, oh, a drive come out with even faster uh, metric for uh, latency when it comes to uh, some of the storage class memory products. So this is interesting. For the first time we've seen a drive from this company, it held together pretty well, had the one sort of uh, issue with SQL Server, but uh, overall looks promising. And uh, the good news is that we know that they're working on another drive. Yes, yeah, so this isn't even their best product. No, the the one that they're going to do with the uh, Kyoxia XL NAND should be uh, really interesting and have a performance profile that wants to, to go attack that high-end business where Optane's playing right now. Yeah, so I'm very interested to see how these guys uh, shake out as uh, time goes on. And I, again, I mean, some of the uh, SQL Server um, issues that we ran into... I mean, those could be kind of uh, tuned out in firmware. Okay, so hopefully they'll do that. Hopefully they'll improve the drive. But either way, we've got another SSD vendor putting out credible products that uh, uh, that look good today, could get better tomorrow, and then they're already showing roadmap product with uh, some real high-end solutions. So I'm I'm excited for it. We we love new toys and. And uh, we don't see a whole lot of new drives coming into the market. To, so to have a, a new to us entrant um, is is pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So uh, thanks for tuning in, checking out this review. And uh, we'll be back soon with more videos.